Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode here on the M.I. Gardener channel. I know you all are going to love this one because it's a complete growing guide on eggplants. Now I get asked all the time how we grow eggplants here and it's a very simple one to grow but there are definitely some care tips that are going to help you out so I'm going to jump right on into it. When you're growing eggplant there are a few things you need to know. The first one is that the size of the eggplant does not determine when it's ripe. A lot of times people all the time think, and it's a very common misconception, that eggplants are ripe when they become a certain size. Now eggplants do have kind of a set size depending on variety. However, eggplants are edible from the beginning they start all the way until they, uh, they're fully mature. They can be eaten anywhere along there. So you don't have to think that your eggplant uh, needs to get full size in order for you to enjoy it. Because oftentimes what happens is people, they grow eggplants and um, this might even happen to you. You wait for it and wait for it and wait for it and it doesn't ever seem to get that large. And then you say, finally say, okay, let's just give it a shot. And you try it and it's so, it's called pithy. It's very, it's spongy and hard. And it can be really discouraging to be honest because it's happened to me, <laughs> I know a lot. And one of the things that happens is the fact that it just goes too long. And so one of the biggest things that I want to focus on in this growing guide, because it's actually a very simple one to grow, it's actually more or less how to tell when they are ripe. So when an eggplant is ripe, it will actually have a slight give to the skin, where if you push it, it will actually leave an indentation and it will take a while for it to come, for it to bounce back. If you, if you push an eggplant that is uh, not ripe obviously it's not going to do much but you don't want to go again too far because um, it's it's fine anywhere up until it's ripe and then anything past that is when it gets hard so we have some small ones here that we could eat right now they'd be delicious but we wouldn't get as much bang for our buck out of them so we're letting those go but um, you could in theory eat them uh, the thing I just don't want to see people do is to let them stay on the on the plant forever not knowing when they're ripe. So when it comes to fertilizing, like I said, it's very much similar to all your other nightshade or solanense family plants. They like a well-balanced fertilizer, but depending on what your kind of what you're going for at the time, you want to adjust the fertilizer. We fertilize our all of our solanense plants including eggplant twice a year. And what we do is in the very beginning we fertilize with an all basically an all-purpose fertilizer. We use Trifecta Plus in the early spring and that basically gets them going. It's got a lot of nitrogen, it's got all of the phosphorus and the potassium the plants need as well to get boosted. You just need the size of the plant to be able to host fruit. Um, and once the plant is to the proper size, it's gonna go crazy with fruit. Once you start seeing a few fruit setting, you want to switch over to a, a little bit higher of a phosphorus fertilizer. And what we do is we actually just come back through and we top dress with more trifecta because trifecta works uh, basically with the fact that the plant, the plant knows what stage it's in and the plant will uptake more of that nutrient based on what stage it's in. So if it's in more of a growth stage, it's going to use more nitrogen in the soil. And if it's using, if it's uh, going through a flowering cycle, it's going to know, the plant knows what it needs. It's going to take up more phosphorus than nitrogen. So we come back and we re-fertilize with that. But if you don't want to do that, you can actually fertilize with blood meal in the spring. It's a lot of nitrogen, it's going to do the job. And you can come back and you can fertilize with uh, bone meal in the, uh, in the kind of the midsummer when you start seeing a couple fruits. So blood meal in the spring, bone meal, uh, bone meal in the summer, and that's going to give you that phosphorus that is going to help. So you can also use rock phosphate, it's a great option. Um, not as fast acting, but still a great phosphorus option. Um, and the phosphorus is just, again, going to focus on the flower production because once you have a plant of a certain size, you just wanna get the fruit on, load the plant up with fruit, and get it ready to ripen because they do take a while to ripen. Once you've gotten the fruit on, um, and they're they're hanging there. They take about well, it depends on the variety, but about tw uh, 20 to 30 days 
till they're till they're fully ripe. So you want to make sure you just have enough time uh, given in the season to get them to their full size. Now, when it comes to watering, very simple. We pretty much water them. Just we water everything else. There's no we don't give them any more special requirements. They are quite drought tolerant. I do want to point that out. So if you're someone that lives in a place that does not get rain that often, or um, you're just not out there to water your garden all that often, eggplants are a great option for you. They're not going to split like tomatoes. They're not going to, uh, you know, they're not going to wither up like greens will. So um, they're just a really good option for those that that um, need a more drought tolerant plant. Um, what I will say is that if they go too long without water, um, the plants will let you know because that will make the fruit slightly bitter. Um, I know oftentimes I get that off all the time. Say, well, my fruit is the right texture, you know, when you press it and it, and it has a little give to the fruit. My fruits have that. Why do I still have a slightly bitter skin? And I, I simply ask, you know, kind of how much water they've been getting it. And they said, well, I, I haven't been getting my, my plants that much water, to be honest. I said, well, that's probably the problem because when they go dry, the plant goes into shock and it produces, um, it, you know, that, that stress that the plant is under changes the, the flavor of the fruit because oftentimes many fruits, especially um, eggplants, will produce basically a, a bitter chemical that will prevent animals from eating them because they're under stress and they want to say, well, the fruit that I have might be the only fruit that I'm going to produce before I die. So I need to protect it at all costs. And it'll produce a bitter taste in the fruit so that if any animals eat it, um, it will it will kind of uh, deter them from finishing the fruit, hoping that you know seeds might become valuable and, and it could produce later on. So you just wanna make sure that you're always giving it at least some water. You can't let it go dry, period. Otherwise, you're going to get that bitter taste because that's, like I said, that defense mechanism the plant produces when it's, uh, when it's uh, dry for too long. So um, keep that in mind. Now when it comes to temperature, it's a warm loving plant. Do not put it out in early spring. And oftentimes people, they all, all the time they say, I throw my, my eggplants right out at the same time I do my peppers. That's fine, you can do that. Um, but just know that peppers, just because they're in the same family as eggplants, doesn't mean they like the same temperatures, okay? Egg, uh, eggplants are not nearly as temperate as, as the uh, peppers are. Eggplants very much enjoy warm summer temperatures. Um, where they originate from, they do not originate in places that get 40 degrees. I'm just sorry, they don't. So we never give our eggplants any less than 45 degrees, any less than 45. Um, and it's just because, again, that stress sets them back. They don't grow as well. And, um, and so we just realize that it's going to be a later harvesting plant. So you're not always going to um, have eggplants as soon as everybody else, but you will have better eggplants that grow faster and produce more for you because they're not spending time being stressed. So that's that. Now, the very last thing that I want to talk about is sunlight and spacing. When it comes to spacing, we space our plants about a foot to a foot and a half, roughly apart. Um, these beds are four feet and we have three, uh, we have about three plants here. So, well, we don't have about, we have three plants, um, but it's about four feet wide these beds and we have three plants here and they're doing great they're not stressed they're not uh, cramped and you can really get a lot of production out of eggplants by putting them close together like that very much so the same way as peppers if you put them close together they're going to be cramped but they're going to produce a lot as well for you so you can get uh, maximum capacity in your beds you can get maximum production um, out of your out of your beds there now the very last thing that I want to talk about is sunlight People need to understand that sunlight is the most important part, I think, to pretty much anything. If you don't have sunlight, you're not going to have a successful plant, regardless of how much fertilizer you give it, how much water you give it, or whatever. Because of the fact that sunlight truly is the only thing that will make the plant grow and produce. You need to be giving your eggplants the same as, you know, again, your tomatoes and peppers. You want to give them about five to seven hours of sun, no less than five. I'm sorry if you don't have five hours of sun. Number one, you're probably not gonna be able to grow tomatoes, you're probably not gonna be able to grow peppers, but you, again, will not be able to grow eggplants either. Um, because they need a lot of energy to put out a lot of fruit, they just simply need that much sun. There's no other way around it. Um, so if you can't provide that, um, that's unfortunate, but uh, if you can give them more than seven hours, great. This garden gets about 11 hours, 12 hours, 
um, depending on the time of year. But nonetheless, it gets full sun pretty much, full, full sun. And uh, 12 hours is, I wouldn't say overkill, it enjoys it, but it certainly um, does, it would do fine in five to seven. So at least give it that, please. Um, and you're gonna have really good, uh, you're gonna have very good eggplants, I guarantee it. Um, so that's really it. That's really all there is to growing eggplants. Hopefully you uh, all enjoyed. Hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully this solved some problems. I know a lot of times, you know, those questions kind of come up here and there and I'm able to put them in one video, which is nice for me because it gives kind of a one-stop shop solution for a lot of different people instead of answering many different emails all written differently. So uh, there you go. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. Hopefully you all are trying eggplants. Let me know in the comments box below how your eggplants are doing, if you're giving them a try, and the varieties you're growing. There's so many out there. I, I'd enjoy to, you know, hearing what you are growing. So that's about it. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Grow big or go home. I'll catch you later. This is Luke from the My Gardener channel. See ya. Bye.